All right. So from our software, remember in our software we ran it. We've got time domain, frequency domain. The frequency was after the Fourier transform. We just changed this one, say time now. No, we just had to change it to frequency. And there we can see there's some noisy signal. If we run it, we can see this needle is jumping around a lot. We can't really see what's going on. Here we add the 2 hertz frequency that we generated. Remember we're generating a signal. Normally you will just get the signal from your measurements, then do this type of analysis. But now we kind of generate the signal to know what we're expecting um, to do the filter design. Uh, so here you can see there's the 2 hertz, the 50 hertz, the 70 hertz. And as I said, we're kind of generating it now, but in real life, it might have come from the machine like this. The two words, we know it's two words because you know kind of the settings of what your machine is supposed to give you. So we would have known that this two would have been noise and we want that out. So if I just paste it here quick, it means this one, it means we want this value to go through and I'm going to put a pole there and we want these two not to go through so we put zeros there. So poles is values that you want to go through, zeros is values that you don't want to go through. Just move it here. So what did we say? We say uh, Z transform is like a circle. We just put in some axis there. where we say this value is 0 up until fs, which in our case is 200. This will then be 100, which is f max. So this 100 here is that 100 there. Remember, it goes all the way here to 200. What do we also know? At 200, there's going to be a ghost frequency for that 2 hertz, and there's going to be one at from that direction 50 on, and from that direction 70 on. There's going to be the spikes for the ghost frequencies. Normally we don't really look at them, we just look at the f max one, but we have to calculate for them when we do a pole zero plot. What else do we know? Yeah, this goes from 1 to minus 1, that is 1 to minus 1, so this is a unity circle with 1s, this is j, j. So the formula for this is very much the same, uh, sorry, this is, a, this is the... Uh, MathCAD file, but I'm not going to show you the MathCAD, I want to show you uh, it using the concepts rather, just snipping to this. Oh, there we go, control copy, control paste. Oh, wait. oh there we go. Control paste, there we go. So this formula, can you see again, it uses the e to the power. And remember in one of the first videos I showed you that e to the power is sine x cos x. So the same as the Fourier transform type of thing. Only thing is now it's plotted in a circle instead of a straight line. Um, Laplace kind of works the same, where then this one is actually from bottom to top. This one is a circle. So again, Laplace would have gone from 0 to 100 upwards with the amplitudes on the side. This one goes in circle, but you don't have to worry about the plus. The plus is not covered in this video. Yeah, so we